God. You know, we should serve the Creator, we should worship Him. Let me tell you something, yeah, before I let you go, because I don't want to uh, 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 make you... Uh, if I give you two million pounds as a gift, I say, you know what, I'm a billionaire. I you like you, I have too much money, I just want to give it away. I'm going to give you two million pounds as a gift. What would you say to me, at least? Would you remember me all the time? Yeah, uh, it's coming, it's coming now, it's coming. So you, you remember me and you will thank me. I will give you two million pounds on a condition, give me your two eyes. No, why? Because your eyes is more valuable than anything, than any money. So why we are not grateful and thankful to the one that gave us eyes for free? You see, that's, the first, that's what Islam teaches you. Be grateful to your creator. Serve him. Now let me give you another uh, uh, question. If you want to buy a gift for your mother, are you going to buy a gift that you love or your mother love? Likewise, you should worship the way the creator loves, not the way we love. The way he loves is objective. The way he loves is subjective. That's why he sent prophets and messengers to teach us about our purpose in this life. When you die or she dies, everyone, we're not going to take nothing with us except our righteous actions. And the biggest crime is to worship someone beside Allah or turn away from the teaching of Allah. We love Jesus, but his teaching has been corrupted without any doubt. It's been changed. The true teaching of Jesus and Moses is in the Quran. What do you think was said so far? Does it make sense? That's why it's Islam. You're more close to Islam. I invite you to become Muslim. Why don't you become Muslim? Why? It's still choosing. Huh? I'm still choosing. I'm choosing. Yeah, like what questions do you have? Salam alaikum. Ask any question. As long as you don't ask me, how, where's my age? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, no problem. Let me give you something to read, please. Okay, brother. Are you Muslim as well? No, I'm what do you mean spiritual? I believe God is energy. Wait, wait. You believe God is energy. But what is energy? Define it. Energy. Energy is anything. We all have energy. That's it. Physics say, physics say, energy doesn't exist by itself. Energy, energy has to be embodied in something else. You have energy in you, you know. So the point here is that when you say, uh, I believe in energy, that is, that in a reality, doesn't make any sense because you're saying, which energy you're referring to? Because energy is not an entity by itself you can point at. I believe God is energy. God the, is energy that no, what we say, and tell me what you think what I'm going to say, yeah? I believe God, yes, he has, we don't use the word energy, yeah? We use the word God has a power, okay? But that is not sufficient for God to create because I can bring to you someone has a power, but he doesn't have an, if he doesn't have a knowledge how to make a phone, would he be able to make a phone? No. So you need the power and you need what? Knowledge. Okay? So these two attributes doesn't exist by itself. It has to be embodied or in someone. Okay? Now he has a power, he has a knowledge, but he doesn't have a free will. Would he be able to make a phone? So he needs a free will. So that's what is the creator. The creator, he has a power. He has a knowledge, he has a will, he has a mercy, he has a wisdom. But what people say is energy, as I said, energy is a term we don't use because the creator never said he has energy. He said he has a power, he has ability, he has a will. You understand? So you believe there is a creator that created the creation, okay? Yeah. Speak to you soon, inshallah. Yeah? Take care. Yeah, sorry, sister. Go on. But again, conscious, what do you mean by that? Yeah, consciousness is something which is like when you have a, like a, when you have consciousness when you are you have something to like a faculty. It's a faculty that you utilize to to, to, to to realize something. Consciousness, yes? Okay. But again that is not God. Because what you have to understand, God is not like the creation, firstly. Secondly, what is logical and rational, that God created the creation, yes. However, God is not like the creation at all. Just like the carpenter is not like the door. The door and the carpenter is not the same. Not because the carpenter made the door, therefore they must share the same thing. You understand? So my point here is we look at the Islamic way of explaining the creator. The creator, we say, is a perfect being. And he has a wisdom. And he has a mercy. And he has a justice. And he has ability. And based upon that, he created the creation, and we can analyze his creation, and we can see his wisdom. We can see his mercy. 
and we can see his anger, we can see his power, all of that. However, now the question we ask ourselves, how can we know we are serving the Creator the way he wants us to serve him? How can we know that? You don't know what? I can't hear you, yo. sorry. I can't speak up there. People who look part of this higher power, we're level with it. I don't believe in serving like a higher power. I think we're level with it and God is within us. But that's contradiction because why? Before the creation, what was God? I mean, we're all a part of God. We're not, no, we're, we're, we're not part of God. No, we were, nothing will exist without the mind believing that it's there. No one will exist without? The mind believing that it's there. No, you know what you're talking about? You're talking about, you are coming from the argument and the philosophical that starts in the 18th century by a, a German philosopher who said the man is God, you know? It's more like, it's like Hinduism before it became a religion. Yeah, but again, how do you know Hinduism is correct? Because I'm spiritual myself, I have my mind I open, I can see energy, I can see it around people. No, but you... I experience it myself, I read tarot cards. You, you express it, well, you cannot see energy. Show me where it's energy. You can see energy around people, of course you can. No, you cannot. So how come psychics are real? Huh? How come psychics are real? So what? How come psychics are real? How come mediums are real? Psychics is real. I'm, I'm confused. If the scientists will tell you, you cannot see, energy is not entity by itself. Energy is an attribute that exists in something goes. Yes. You cannot point out as energy. Like here, there's, there's we say camera has energy, but you cannot say energy such and such. Energy is not entity that is by itself. It's an attribute. And before the creation, what I'm going to say to you, before the creation, there was a creator, correct? Okay. So the creator clearly is separate from his creation. So a logical way to say, either when the creator created the creation, he created it, then he entered into the creation, or he created the creation in himself, or he created the creation separate from him. Which one is the logical and rational way? I don't think it's separate. But we clearly see there's difference between you and I. If all of us will have God in us, you have different power than me. So we can see we're not one. What I'm saying is one consciousness means doesn't mean we're all the same, we all think the same. It's just one consciousness, it's just we come from one thing. Like, you know how science says we came from dead stars, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So we all come from one universe. Yeah, no, we agree with that. All of us, we've been created from one uh, for, uh, for example, we believe everything was created from water. There's no doubt about that. But that's, that doesn't that resolve the issue that you have, that you are saying that we have... I understand that. If you are saying that we come from the same thing, no doubt about that. But that thing must have a creator. And that creator cannot be that thing, because that is illogical. Because it doesn't make any sense. The creator is the creation. It doesn't make any sense. It's like the, the camera. The, the, cam the one that made the camera is the camera. Uh, is it too much for... Uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's a logical way. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I feel like you can create something on the same energy level as you. You can be a part of something. We don't we 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 disagree with that, but I'm saying logical way, when you, when you look at the creation of our creation, you can analyze this creation must have a powerful, uh, a knowledgeable, uh, wise creator. Without any doubt, you can see this attribute the manifestation of the effort of the Creator's attribute in the creation. You, you, we can see that clearly. You understand? Just on a phone, look. If I tell you this phone was made by... by, by uh, okay, listen to this. This phone either was made by a child or a rock or a man who has PhD. Which one is it? Why is not a rock? Rock has energy. It doesn't have energy. That's it. Also, Child now, we said he doesn't have the knowledge. Child has, child has energy and the knowledge. Why is not a child? You said because he doesn't have the knowledge. The rock doesn't have the knowledge, yes? Okay, child has energy and has the knowledge. Why is not a child who made the phone? Why is a man with PhD? Because he has the knowledge. Because why? This type of phone, you don't need no more knowledge. You need knowledge that is greater than a child. So you can analyze as a phone, you can see the one who made this phone must have more knowledge than a baby, have more power than a baby, he has more wisdom, more attributes which will allow him to create this phone. This phone is a simple phone. 
What about yourself? What about this creation? That's why Allah always tells us to utilize our intellect and reflect upon the creation and upon yourself. You must have a creator who possesses knowledge and a power. You say energy, we say no, power. And that is not enough to have a power. Power and a wisdom. And how do you know who is that creator? Likewise, I can prove to you that must be a creator uh, uh, that uh, possess those attributes is uh, using the argument of the prophets and the messengers. Moses, Abraham, Jesus, and the prophet Muhammad, who was the last of them, who came, he said, yes, the creator sent me. We look to his prophecies, we look to his miracles, we look to his teaching. You know, prophet Muhammad said, there's a verse in the Quran, yeah? Allah said that Islam will become widespread even if the enemies of Islam will dislike it. And we know there is a big war against Islam. No doubt about that. You know, in the media, 24 hours against Islam in France, in Belgium. However, the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth is Islam. Not the Muslims are doing the job. It's the Most High that I mentioned that 1,400 years ago. That cannot be a statement of any human being. It must be the statement of the creator of the creation. You see, so I can prove to you that the creator is what we believe is a true creator from two angles, logical, rational way, and from the scripture and the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad. You understand? So you believe, like you believe that you should worship something, you should be spiritual, you understand? But that is not enough because we have to understand we should have an objective way to know that what we believe about the Creator must be the truth. And the only way we can attain that is by going back to the Creator. Just like the only way to know objectively what is good for this and what is bad for this by going back to the Creator. Does it make sense? It's a logical way, you understand? And that's the teaching of Islam. Look to Prophet Muhammad teaching. And you know what? Distinguish Islam, sister, from any religion. Islam says, yeah, be spiritual. But likewise, physical. Islam, there is a worship which deals with spiritual. For example, loving God, uh, uh, loving the neighbors, loving your parents, uh, uh, feeling sorry for the poor people. That is a worship we believe. Okay, we got rewarded for it, you know? Likewise, it's a physical worship, prayer physical worship sometimes it's two prayer is two is a physical worship and spiritual worship also Islam tell us there's another type of worship financial worship which is what given charity so when you look to Islam Islam tells you yes there is spiritual worship but that's not sufficient you know the physical worship that's not sufficient final financial worship and when you look to Islam sister Islam deals with every aspect of life I'm gonna tell you one thing I'm sorry for taking your time I really appreciate your time did you know the five things that destroy societies? Alcohol, gambling, fornication, drugs, interest. You know interest? Usually. All of that Islam prohibited. So these five things are destroying the, the society individually and collectively. But guess what? Prophet Muhammad came with the legislation to teach us don't do this stuff. So how man that lived, lived in the middle of the desert came with a teaching that we can verify it empirically and we can come to know his teaching is a perfect way of life for everyone. And the only people who are very hostile to Islam is the people who are interested for their own benefits. And they don't care if you, if you get destroyed, if you become crazy because of drugs or alcohol or society. But Islam comes to protect the society and individuals. And this is, I'm giving you a real one. Alcohol in Islam, anything that gets you intoxicated is forbidden. Do you know how much we spend on NHS every year because of alcohol? Two point something billion a year. Two, see, I'll give you another thing about what beautiful Islam and distinguish Islam, sister. Yeah? Islam, it tells us to, how to deal with the evil. For example, in this country, because we're from this country, we live in this country, and I love good food in this country, yes? In this country, rape is illegal, correct? Drugs is illegal, correct? Okay. Likewise, killing people, stabbing people is a crime, okay, correct? Watch this. So one hand is illegal, we should not do that. However, our government is paying a big money for a singers to come and give them a platform and make sure they are safe to promote these crimes. See the contradiction? That's why what different Islam, Islam does not contradict itself at all. Islam teach you if this evil and there's something that leads to it, we cut it off. The example of that, imagine there is a tree, sister, yeah? 
There's a tree in our city, and this tree every year grows fruit that has poison. So the authority, what it does, goes try to rush to remove the fruit, but guess what? Every year, some people eat from the fruit and they die. Logical way to do it, remove the whole tree, correct? Because the tree keeps giving a fruit that is poison. That's how Islam deals with evil. Doesn't tell you, no, drink alcohol, but it's okay. Cigarettes, cigarettes, people, some don't have nothing to eat, but he will leave his family dying out of anger. He goes buy cigarettes. Look what they say. No, you're allowed to, buy, to sell cigarettes as long as you say it's evil. Islam tell you, no, 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 no. It's causing evil, destroying individuals and society. We cut it off. Look to Islam. Islam teaching cares about your in, inside and outside and about the, the everything. That's the Islam teaching. Look to the Quran. There is no scripture that has been preserved like the Quran. And we can verify that. And Allah mentioned that in the Quran 1,400 years ago. Do you know what Allah said? Allah said, we send down the Quran. Okay, Allah send down the Quran. And he will preserve it. That is a claim. Because it's not enough to say the Quran is the word of Allah. You have to, the proof, correct? Now, this claim, Allah said it in the Quran 1,400 years ago. Can we verify this claim? Yes. If the whole Muslims burn their scriptures, okay? Burn their scriptures. Nothing left for the Quran. And the Christians, everyone, the only book that we can bring back and can be preserved in, and bring it back into the written form is the Quran. Do you know who can do that? Not the Muslim scholars. Not the Muslim scholars. The Muslim children. There is 100,000 of Muslim children memorize the Quran word for word, letter for letter. Everyone here memorize A, B, C, D. You with me? A, B, C, D, yeah? But I can change it by writing A, O, C. But everyone said, no, no, it's A, B, C. And that's the situation with the Quran. Likewise, the Quran mentioned that this book will be memorized by everyone. Can we verify this claim? Go to Africa, go to Asia, Europe, England, America, Muslim at the age of seven, eight, memorize the Quran word for word, letter for letter. How men that lived 1,400 years ago, prophesizing in the Quran, likewise the prophecy. Let me give you another prophecy to know when a Muslim believes Islam is the truth, not because my feeling, because we can establish logically, rationally, with the tangible proofs, Islam is the truth. Prophet Muhammad said, will come a time, or he said he saw people getting punished, and one of them, he will make up a lie in the morning, yes? In the same morning that he made up the lie, his lie will reach far east, far west. That was impossible to occur the time of the Prophet Muhammad, because Prophet Muhammad lived 1,400 years ago. In, at that time, in order for you and I to travel from here to Cardiff, it would take us three days. Let alone for my lie to spread far east, far west in the same morning that I made up the lie. Now what we can do, let us verify this prophecy. Make up a lie, put it on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Where it goes? Everywhere. So how men that lived 1,400 years ago tell us about something that we can observe. Another prophecy, Prophet Muhammad said, he said there will come a time when the interest will become widespread. Even if you are not involved directly, it will affect you. And that is happening right now. That's why when Allah, the creator of everything, sends the prophets and messengers, he doesn't not just send them by saying you are a prophet. No, he gives them something to differentiate them from the rest of the people in order for you and I to know, yes, they are the prophets of God and they are liars. What, what do you think what I said so far? Does it make sense? Is it clear? I will invite you to Islam. Seriously, because what, if it makes sense to you, is it clear? Like, you know, the example I gave to, the, to your friend here about the two million pounds. I can give you another example. You know, for example, imagine you're in a house and you are being surrounded with a fire. Surrounded with a fire, you're about to die. You tried to save yourself, but you gave up. I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me at least? Would you remember me all the time? Of course, I saved your life. Okay, why we are not grateful and thankful to the one and remember the one that gave us a life for free. You understand? That's what Allah always in the Quran emphasized on using the intellect. Reflect upon the creation. Reflect upon yourself. And yes, now we know I should be grateful for the one who gave me life. You know? But the other one, if you want to buy a gift for your friend, are you going to buy a gift that you love or your friend love? Likewise, we want to worship the creator. We should worship him the way he loves, not the way we love. That's why Islam based upon two testimonies. I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. 
and Muhammad the Messenger of Allah. Mean I should worship my Creator. I should have connection with my Creator according to His will and His wisdom, and by testifying Muhammad the Messenger of Allah because of the proofs that I have seen, His prophecies, His teaching, how it goes in line with our sound reasoning. See what I'm saying? Huh? Before I so finish, man. Yeah, she's with you? Huh? She's with you? Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, can I, uh, uh, so uh, become Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi. It's, look, sister, what I will say to you, look. I understand. My wife, she's a revert. My wife became Muslim when she was very young. You know, um, before I met her. She became Muslim when she was 14. She said, well, Islam made sense for her. She accepted Islam. Even though her, her stepfather is an atheist, her mother, she doesn't believe in God. You know, it's a funny story because her mother, she's from Seleucia. They're from Seleucia, you know. Her mother, she came to this country. She doesn't want to go to church anymore. She said the reason being, every time she goes to church, they keep asking for money, money. And they keep coming to her, give me money, and she doesn't have money. So when my wife came to this country, when she was very young, so she said to her mom, let's go to church. She said, no, forget church. They keep asking for money, and I don't have money. But anyway, she said, what made me change, uh, uh, when she told me her story, she said, if Jesus is God, how is praying to another God? God doesn't pray to no one. And she said, Islam goes in line with what I believe already. That I should worship God alone, and I should worship no human being, no matter, no tree, nothing. I should worship the creator of everything. You see what I'm saying? And she become Muslim. Well, lie because why? You don't know when you're going to die. I don't know why I'm going to die. You know, this life is not a joke. But what's happening now, the evil ones are utilizing our social media to divert us from the main purpose of Islam. Nothing is guaranteed in this life except death. As I said to your friend, how many people left their houses, they never come back. I will read it to send before the Creator. Allah said, Allah said the meaning of the verse. Do you think that we created you without any purpose and that you will never return to us? Far away Allah from this evil statement because Allah is the most wise, the most knowledgeable, the greatest. He will not create the creation without any purpose. So Allah created us for a purpose and we have to fulfill that purpose. It's up to you now. We have the free will to accept Islam. And of course, as always I say, if you eat the whole cake at once, what will happen to you? You vomit. Okay? In order to feel the sweetness of the cake, you take it bit by bit. Likewise, Islam, first, you share the turn. You are the people, you will be in the grave. You will be buried by yourself. That's why the Prophet Muhammad said, said, remember the grave. He said, remember the death, because the death will cut you off from this life. Anything that is, to, for example, I want to have a nice car, death will cut you off from that. You know, we have to be serious. We have to be realistic that we're going to stand. And Allah has attributes, attributes of mercy. That's why he created paradise. The attributes of anger. That's why he created the hellfire. But again, he clarified the truth to us. And he said, the Satan is our clear enemy. Don't follow his footsteps because the enemy of your forefather, Adam. Now it's up to you, my sister. When it's clear to you, makes sense to you to take the correct decision, to have a relationship with your creator and to follow the teaching of the Most High and to worship him the way he wants to worship. That's why I keep asking you, if it makes sense to you, is it clear to you, I'm inviting you to Islam. To that which make you happy in this life and the hereafter. You, are, you wanna become Muslim? Forget about people. That would, no, you eat, not yet. Don't be, don't rush. Yeah. Get a knife, get a knife. To your forza. I'm joking. I don't want to put pressure on you, sister. But if it makes sense, it's clear to you. I will tell you, look, become Muslim, then learn step by step. You look, how many years you've been cut off, been cut off, or been cut off from worshiping the Creator? He wants to worship Him. If I give you two million pounds, you're not gonna say to me, Shamsi, give me some time before I thank you. You're gonna thank me straight away. What about the Creator? Look at the examples I gave you. Well, like anyone who is a sincere person, analyze Prophet Muhammad's teaching, analyze the Quran's teaching. See, it goes in line with our universal knowledge, our sound reasoning, natural inclination. You know, like you know, Prophet Muhammad said, when a person wants to become Muslim, the Satan will come to her or him, try to do everything to put up barriers for them to accept Islam. But when you accept Islam and you take shahada, you see how you change. And I'm telling you based upon the experience of my wife, you know, how they change. Which is what? I bear witness, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. Then you learn more and more. And you have your Muslim friends here. Alhamdulillah. The reason I'm trying to make you say it, but before, I'm telling you, if it makes sense to you, I believe it's true, say it. You know why? Because if you become a Muslim, I will get a reward. Prophet Muhammad told us, 
if one person become a Muslim through you, it's better than the world and what is in it. And Islam teach us when you call people to worship Allah, don't ask anything from them. Even don't thank me. Because why? I want the reward of the Most High, which is better than anything else. See? So if you believe it's in your heart, say it. If you love your mother, would you not say it? Huh? Khalas, if it makes sense to you. If you are shy for the people, then you can say it there. But you're going to say something which please the Creator. Something that which is going to bring you back to your... That's why when someone becomes a Muslim, what we say? He's a revert or she's a revert? Revert means you're going back to your original state. And the Prophet Muhammad said, every child is born with a natural inclination, meaning to submit to the Creator. And now they've done a study, they came to know, listen to the study at Oxford University, yeah? They've done a study, they came to know that, they, uh, it took them three years, and they spent 1.9 million on this project, yeah? They came to know that children, if you leave them without any outside fa factors affecting their the thinking and their natural inclination, they will grow up worshipping and believing in God. I'm not saying they believe in God's name is Allah, but they have that uh, uh, something which accept that. It's like a Wi-Fi connection. You know that? What do you call it? Intuition, yeah, something that would in them that accept that, you know? So it's like you have a Wi-Fi and you have a phone, so you connect it. That's how you, 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 the Wi-Fi is something within you. And uh, the router is the Quran. So you connect straight away. The example I'm giving. That's the beauty of Islam. It's connect to your heart. Connect to your sound reasoning system. That's why I'm uh, inviting you to say it. It's better than the word that is in it. But again, I don't want to make you feel pressured. None of that. That's why I always say to people, if it makes sense and believe it's the truth, say it. It does make sense. Say it then, alhamdulillah. Become Muslim. Forget the people. No, forget the people. You should, invite, you should encourage her to become Muslim. You don't tell her, stop it. What is like? What, what is like? Tell her. What is like? She, you should tell her to become Muslim. Well, like, if, you, if you have a true friend, look, many Muslims have noticed when they have a non-Muslim friend, they don't advise them to become Muslim. They tell them, you should advise her because if you really love her, you know there's a story, there's a narration. They said, What she said? She said, I don't know the whole religion. Yeah, but you don't, that's a good question. Do I have to know the whole religion to, be, to become a Muslim? I don't know everything. What I'm teaching you, sister, the foundation. Let me make it clear to you, yeah? You go to your doctor, yes, to your GP, and you listen to his advice, even though you don't know his shoe size, even though you don't know how many children he has, correct? So you don't know his life story or his daily life, but you still accept him to trust him. Why? Because you are working with the foundation is, which is, this person is qualified, he's a doctor. Likewise, if the foundation is clear, logic dictates the branches must be clear. That's what distinguishes Islam from any religion. Islam, there is not any contradiction with Islamic foundation. However, some people do misunderstand the Islamic branches. Why? Because they take the branch and isolate it from its foundation. Do you understand that? But when you connect the branch to the foundation, everything will become clear. That's what is Islam. Alhamdulillah. What are you rooting? Who root this one? What? No, sorry, I'm just charging something. Oh, you're always a root Yeah, Ula sister, that's what I advise you. And you should encourage her. You know, remember that story. If you want to go there because there are too many people. No, I'll... Tell her the six pillars, please. Five pillars. Yeah, I'll tell you. The, okay. So the five pillars, six pillars of Islam. As we said, to believe in Allah. Because why? Before that, if you believe in Allah, and you believe, yes, Allah is a true Prophet Muhammad is a true Prophet, based upon the proofs and the logical argument, then of course, logically, you're going to believe what it came with. You understand? Yeah, it's a logical way. If you believe I'm a doctor, and I know your disease, may Allah forbid, you know? Hopefully you don't have no disease, may Allah forbid. Just give an example. Logic dictates you're going to believe what I'm going to tell you. Likewise, the Most High, who we, we established already, he has the wisdom and mercy and justice, will not choose a lie to convey the message. So, first one is to believe in Allah, to believe in the angels. The angels is a creation like Gabriel, who Allah created. And also believe in the books, that Allah sent down the books to Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all prophets and messengers to guide mankind. Likewise, we believe in the Day of Judgment, that all of us will be resurrected and God will judge us according to our actions. Hitler will not escape. Mao will not escape. Stalin will not escape. 
There's many evil people who kill many innocent people and nothing happened to them. But I don't think nothing happened to them. Allah said, we'll bring them back to life. That is a day of judgment. Also, we believe that everything that takes place, takes place by Allah's permission. This is called the inward belief. The outside now, actions, prayer. As I said, every time you pray, there's benefits. You are connecting yourself to your creator, serving your creator, the prayer. Also, we have charity. So as I told you, when you look at Islamic legislation, benefits you as individual and benefits society. Prayer is for your own good. Why are you connecting yourself to your creator? You know, you pray the way the creator wants to pray. Also fasting. Fasting is good for you. And also fasting makes you soft. Get, it brings you closer to Allah and it makes you soft toward the poor people. Because many people say, I feel sorry for the poor people. But when you fast and you know for 18 hours you've been fasting, now you have food in front of you, you remember what? There are some people that have no food. So what you do at the end of Ramadan or every day of Ramadan, you make sure you give more money to poor people. So it's good for you. Likewise, we have uh, uh, charity. There's two types of charity. There's a yearly one and there's one after Eid. Look, my sister, yeah? if everyone implements the Islamic legislation, for example, charity, will have no poverty. See, so charity. Hajj. Hajj means there is a place like Kaaba in Mecca in Saudi that we go, sacred pilgrimage, and we do it if you're able to do so. That's the teaching of Islam. But like I said, you take it step by step. You know, there was a sister here, she became Muslim from Trinidad. Alhamdulillah. And she, as I said, Islam makes sense. And many people, yesterday, English lady became Muslim. Mabel Ash. When I explained to her Islam, she said, yes, I want to become Muslim. Why? Because when you have no true teaching of the Creator, you don't know what you're worshipping. But when you look to Islam, that's why I was saying if it makes sense and it's clear, take it. Then you learn bit by bit. Because if you want to learn how to drive, you don't learn outside the car. Well, how you do? You go inside the car and you start learning, step by step. Likewise, you know, Shahadatan. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, any person that said Shahadatan or become Muslim, all his sins, or has his sins, or has sins forgiven, except if you debt, debt, you have to give it back to the person, or you stole something from a person and you know him, or you know her, you give it back to him. But whatever between you and Allah, Allah forgive all the sins. Simple, and it's a logical way. You know, and you know, I was going to tell you a story for your friend now. Prophet Muhammad, there's a story, it's been mentioned, that once God sent the angel to destroy, uh, to destroy his city, your evil people, the angel said to, God, to Allah, there is someone who is a believer in there. He said, start with him first. He said, why? He said, because he knew the truth, but he was not teaching the people. So as a Muslim, if we have friends that are not Muslims, we should tell them, look, I, I, I want good for you. If I'm a true friend to you, this is not a life. This life is temporary. This is like a bridge. You can't die any time. Any age you can die. Literally, you can leave this place and something, may Allah forbid, happen to you. That's why, you know, Allah said, Fear the day. Fear the day that you will return to Allah and you will stand before Allah. Allah said in the Quran, Fear the day that you will the meaning of the verse, Allah said, say to them, O Muhammad, those who try to negate Allah, who turn away from his teaching, that death that you try to run away from, surely will meet you and you return to Allah and he will inform you of that which you used to do. Allah said, Are we going to make equal those who are righteous with those who are evil? How can you judge? That is from the injustice for Allah to make equal the believers with disbelievers on the day of resurrection. Rather, Allah prepared a place which is eternal. You know where it's eternal? You will not end. It's paradise. However, that place is so valuable. It's so expensive. So Allah put in front of it many barriers. It's for you to fight against it, to deserve that place. You know? Can I say something? Yeah, yeah tell me. You say, you say all this like Jannah, Jahannam, I've got a lot of Muslim friends saying all of this, but nobody here has been to this Jannah or this Jahannam, so we don't know whether this Jannah or Jahannam exists. Like, have anyone of you here been to Jannah? Okay, so. Anyone here been yeah, to yeah. So we don't know, because right now I think you're kind of like selling people a bunch of like hopes and that. Because no one here has been to this journal or Johanna, so technically, I don't know, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I understand that, I understand But it. we don't, you, you can't say it exists because you haven't been there or seen it for yourself. Okay, so that will take us, what's your name by the way, brother? Huh? What's your name? My name. My name. Yeah. My name.
محمد عبد القادر ونون اوكي ناس سميت بلا انا شمسي ذا ويل برينغ اس باك وات از ا سورس اوف نوليدج از ات ذا اونلي واي فور مي تو نو سمثينغ اكزيست اي هاف تو سي ات ار يو سيين ذا اي مين يو دونت ليف ذيس لايف يو يو ار بين You, you, what you've been doing, being this honest in the debate now, because in the debate, you're going to try to defend your point. Because in our daily life, we don't live the way you said. If, you're, if the council called you, say we have a house for you. Before the council, everyone here follow GPS a machine. A machine is following you, telling you to go place, but you know for sure that place exists. Otherwise, don't follow G G uh, the GPS. So why you are following GPS, if in order for you to know something exists, you have to see it with your own eyes. See, so therefore, there, there's many ways of us to know something exists. That's not only restricted to observation. Because if you restrict, if you restrict, in order for us to know something exists, only to our observation, there is many things in our life we have to deny. You understand? You have to deny your four, four, four fathers. You have to deny. That's why this is a fallacy that many people commit. You understand? Because many of our knowledge, brother, is based upon transmission of information. I'm from Algeria, okay? Some people don't even been Algeria. But we know Algeria exists. Why? Because they, before we go to that, today if BBC says tomorrow there is no school, everyone will not take their children to school. Why? But hold on a minute, I never went to school and see there's no school. Why? Because there's other indication to indicate this speaks on behalf of the government. So you're taking a woman information to know for sure there's no school. You understand? So that is a logical, that is a fallacy that you just committed there, okay? Now, did someone, yes, Prophet Muhammad went and he saw powders in the hellfire. The prophets and messengers, they saw that, yes. But how do yeah. you, listen, but he, can say, he can tell you that, oh yeah, I went to, you know, I saw the heavens, but how do you know that you 100% believe it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So now when you look to the prophets and messengers, even though they never met each other. For example, imagine someone comes to me now. He says, someone got stabbed. Another person said, someone got stabbed. They don't know each other, yeah? Another person said someone got stabbed. Another person, 25 people came to us. They don't know each other. They haven't met each other. And they say someone got stabbed. That will give you certainty and knowledge that someone got stabbed. Because these guys, they never met each other. And they have not uh, 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 spoke to each other. But they come with the same information. Likewise, we look to the prophets and messengers. They never met each other. And they come with the same teaching that there is a hellfire in paradise. That's one thing. Secondly, I can establish with a logical way, a rational argument, Prophet Muhammad is an honest and a truthful person. Why? When you look to his biography, when a person came to be a prophet of God, either he's deluded, okay? He's deluded, he's, maybe he's mentally disturbed, okay? Or he wants to gain something from the worldly affairs because he's a liar, remember? If someone came to be a prophet of God, either he's the most truthful person or the biggest liar. And, and a liar is not going to tell you he's a prophet of God for the sake of uh, uh, the hereafter, because he doesn't even believe in the hereafter. He's going to tell you to be prophet of God, to manipulate you, to gain something from this life. Do you agree so far? Can I get what you're saying? I yeah, can I, should I repeat it? Yeah, anyway, should I repeat it? For example, if I'm not a prophet, if I'm, if I'm going to claim to be a prophet of God, what I'm going to do, I'm going to claim it for a reason. Either I'm deluded, mentally disturbed, or I want to gain something from it. And because I don't believe, in God, and I don't believe in the Hayya for after, I'm a liar, so I'm not going to try to gain something by telling you, don't give me nothing, God's going to reward me. Because I'm a liar, I don't even believe in God. I'm going to expect something from you. Last and the last Prophet Muhammad's biography. Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, he, his house, he was a poor man. والسلام. There was uh, uh, the wife, Aisha, she said for two months, Prophet Muhammad was eating only dates and water. Hold on a minute. This man is a liar. Why he's going to be just date and water? Rather, when the Prophet Muhammad, his companion, came to him, he said, listen, O oh Messenger of Allah, let me bring you something. Let you beautify your house. You know what he said? He said, no. Are oh, you paying attention to her to me? You keep looking at her. Look at me, brother, I'm here. You know, pay attention. Because you came with argument, I want to show you. Your, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, not destroy it in a way. I'm going to refute it with a logical argument. We, 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 I'm going to dismiss it, yeah. So, man came to Prophet Muhammad, let us give you something. Prophet Muhammad said, no, I don't want it. Because my reward with Allah. Wait, 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 he's a liar. He, he doesn't believe there's the hereafter. I'll give you another one. Prophet Muhammad during his lifetime. During his lifetime. Eclipse. You know, eclipse occurred, yeah? Yeah, occurred. His companions, they were not familiar with it. They were not familiar, okay? The same day his son passed away, his son died. 
people say the reason eclipse occurred because his son passed away. Remember, a liar is going to try to utilize anything to justify he's a prophet of the Most High. You know what he did? He said, no, what happened has nothing to do with my life or my son's life or death. That what happened is from God. When you see it, go and pray to God. And when he gave a talk to them, he never mentioned his son's death. He told them that prepare yourself for the day of judgment. That is not the characteristics of a liar, brother. That is not the characteristics of someone who wants to be claimed to be a prophet of God to gain something. And we know historically, amongst the Muslim historians and non-Muslim historians, Prophet Muhammad was a sound man, intelligent man. Another one, Prophet Muhammad, a woman uh, in his lifetime, she doesn't want to get married to his companion. She doesn't want to get married to his companion, you know? She doesn't want to stay with his companion. Prophet Muhammad came to her, listen carefully, yeah? He came to her, she said to her, because the companion loved her so much, and he was following her everywhere, okay? Prophet Muhammad said, are you not amazed with so-and-so? He loves her so much, and she hates him. So Prophet Muhammad came to her, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said to her, why don't you go back to him? Listen to these brothers, yeah? Listen to it. She said, oh, messenger of Allah, are you saying it to me because you are a messenger of Allah? Or you just try to mediate? He said, no, I'm trying to try and mediate. It's up to you to reject it or no. He said, I want to reject it. Wait a minute. If he's a liar and he is slept against woman, what he could have done? Manipulator. He said, no, no, Allah told me. So what she's going to do? He said, Allah told me I'm going to go back. He said, no. Another woman came to the messenger of Allah. She said, oh, messenger of Allah, my father forced me to get married to someone I don't like. Prophet Muhammad SAW said, you are allowed to divorce. When you look to his biography, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he conquered the Arab Peninsula. And he said, I'm not here for this life. That is not a biography. That's why the Muslim scholar said, when you study Prophet Muhammad's biography, you can see this man is not a liar. For example, Prophet Muhammad was in Medina. You know what is Medina? Yeah, there's Mecca and Medina. Medina, a lot of people that were there, they were Israelites. They were what? Israelites. But guess what? Prophet Muhammad in Medina is defending Jesus. If he was a liar, he should be agreeing with the Israelites to gain more followers. But he was saying, the Israelites, you are lying against Jesus. Jesus was a mighty messenger. He was, not, he was born without a father. He was a true Messiah. And you are lying against him. And his mother was truthful. The liar, mainly he wants to gain stuff from the, this life. And he wants to have more followers. But no, he went against them. Rather, if he agreed with the Israelites, the Arab pagans will follow him. So, clearly, a man is an honest man, truthful and trustworthy. Does it make sense? That's it, alhamdulillah. Are you Muslim? So say shahada, brother. <laughs> alhamdulillah, we have two, two people, same time. So anyway, you stopped me. So what I say to you, look, there's a fa big fallacy that people try to utilize to say the only way to, for me to believe, because say, there's a difference between believe and knowing. You only believe, but we know. No, there's many roots of knowing something. It's not only uh, to, know, to observation or our experience, also to our sound reasoning. For example, um, A, let's say this carefully, yeah? A is bigger than B. A is bigger than B. B is bigger than C. Which one is bigger, A or C? A, A. But you haven't seen, you haven't seen C and you haven't seen A. Why? You are utilizing your sound common sense to analyze that you can know something for sure bigger than something without observing it. Because by definition, bigger means bigger. You understand? So there's a, that's what's called common sense. And that's what Islam goes in line with our common sense. So what you have to understand, sister, because you said it makes sense. Even if it makes sense, none of you will be inside the grave by yourself. This life, we're not here just to waste our time. We're not here just to have sex and sleep around and drink and do this. We are here for greater wisdom. However, those who are in power, they are manipulating the people to divert us from the great wisdom. And to both of you, the proof has been established upon you to see, especially you, Islam is the truth and it makes sense. So now it's up to you to reject and accept. But on the day of resurrection, don't blame no one except yourself. That's the reality. Allah said on the day of judgment, they will say, Oh Allah, turn me back, bring me back. That's what will happen. So, become Muslim, alhamdulillah. You want to become Muslim? No problem, inshallah. Let me give you, did I give you something? Let me give you this. No problem, sister. I don't want to put pressure. But why would you, when you leave, make sure, don't let this life divert you. You know, here. Where are you from? What country from? If you don't mind. Nigerian. Nigerian? Yeah. Football, what do you think about football? Huh? Football, football, no, football. Do you watch African football, African Cup?
Who is the best? Nigeria, we beat you. What are you talking about? Algeria beat you 2-1. Okay, okay, so? We are the best African team. When's the last time you won African Cup of Nations? When's the last time? 2019. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we beat you. <laughs> well, you know, take care of yourself, yeah? Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Read, please, Baba, yeah? All right, take care. All right. Take care, yeah? Have a nice evening.